Well, it's Thursday, and you all know what that means. That means, once again, we have TNA. As you know, we are now stepping into another, you know, storylines with TNA. Uh, in this particular day, we have, of course, Mustafa Ali once again defends his X Division title against Chris Sabin, who cashed in his little rematch. We do have, of course, Nick Maneth and Speedball Mountain teaming up to take on Macklin and the Rascals. And we got, of course, a bit of an action of our newly crowned TNA Knockouts Tag Team Champions and very much more. Then we move on with Ring of Honor. As you know, we continue with more of the ROH World Women's Television Title Tournament. And I think we're in the quarterfinals. I'm not sure. We will see what happens until then. We also got some interesting Four Corners Survivals match in both the men's and the women's. And of course, we have a very interesting surprise that will lead us to the next big pay-per-view, Supercard of Honor. But first things first, we're going to, of course, be reviewing two Yoshi Wrestling uh, events. Now, if you guys are big fans of the Yoshi Wrestling scene, then you're in luck. We're going to be reviewing, of course, Marvelous, Marvelous in Shinkiba that took place back on March 8th. And then after that, we have Oz Academy with Sweet Tears that took place on March 10th. And this one features, of course, the debut of Unagi Sayaka. So any of my subscribers out there are big-time Unagi Sayaka fans. Well, you don't want to miss this, but I will review that again at the Unagi Sayaka Watch as soon as possible. But after that, we will be doing some, of course news updates for everybody to keep you guys informed what's going on in the world of pro wrestling such as what events the promotions are throwing out who's booked what matches are set we also got some developments on the wrestle condom who's going to be appearing and of course a very interesting thing coming from the undertaker which i think many of you are going to be saying man that sucks and it should have happened but it didn't but we'll get to that at some point but for now let's get ready for another episode of the Leaded Wrestle Zone. Welcome everybody to the Lead It Wrestle Zone, all things that is pro wrestling with AEW, NXT, New Japan Pro Wrestling, TNA, the National Wrestling Alliance, Ferris Promotions, Wrestlers Matches and Championships. I am your host, J Rod here. So if you are new to the channel, welcome. This is a channel where we do a lot of pro wrestling reviews from various promotions, not only here in the United States, but also in Japan, Mexico. Canada, Europe, the UK, anywhere in the world where pro wrestling is not as big, but it continues to grow. We also do discussion videos, talk about various topics in the world of pro wrestling, such as the promotions themselves, the wrestlers, factions, storylines, whatever we want to talk about. We also do more news updates. If I'm unable to put it on this episode, I can put it on a separate video by itself. We also, of course, do real-timing news updates to keep you guys on alert if something interesting has taken place in the world of pro wrestling that we need to talk about and address. We also do the United Siaka Watch and various other cool things as well. So if you like what you see, please subscribe to us or click on that subscribe button. You'll be getting a lot of daily reviews and other cool stuff on this channel. But if you like this episode, please give us a like on the like button or a nice comment in the description down below. Now, all introductions are set aside, needs to be said, and all this, I believe it's time to get the show on the road. So let's begin with Marvelous. Okay, our first review is for Marvelous, and this took place back on March 8th at Shinkiba. Now, nothing too special about this event, but nonetheless, there are some good matches you probably definitely, definitely want to enjoy. Now, our first match is tag team action. We got Chi Ozara from Pure J 
she teams up with none other than the eel herself, Unagi Sayaka. They take on our current AAW World Tag Team Champions, Magenta, Maria, and Rico Kawahata in a non-title uh, match. Now, these titles are not defended by any means necessary, but I have to say the match was pretty good. Now, it would have been a possibility if this particular match, if Unagi and Chi would have had the opportunity to pin Magenta, then they would have had the chance to defend their belts against them, but it did not. But I have to say, Chi fought valiantly against Riko Kawahata while Maria was dealing with Unagi. But it was, of course, Riko with the buzzsaw kick and put away Chi and boom. Just like that, they won the match. So basically, but you probably can guess that this thing with Unagi is not over. So we'll see what happens after that. Now, our next match, we have this, as you know, Marvelous normally would do one match involving the men's. Uh, we have Takumi Saito. They take on Marvelous' very own Leo Aizaka. Uh, you would say this match was pretty interesting. Um, normally, you probably would think, why is one ma match with the men's? It's like that. I mean, it's the reverse thing. Pure, uh, un, was it, um, Mission Pro Wrestling does the same thing, too. But, nonetheless, um... I have to say it was interesting, but it was, of course, inevitable that Leo was going to win this one since this is his turf. So he picked up the win with the Brain Buster, and just like that, it was over. <sighs> Excuse me. I'm a bit tired. Now, our next match, we have a bit of a three-way. We have Izuki Aoki versus Maya Yuhiki, and Hibiscus Me, who I haven't seen for a long time. Uh, I don't know where she's been. Last time I seen her, she was like somewhat <coughs> in a relationship with Leo Izaka. But that's a story for a, a, another time. But uh, it was great to interesting see her. But what's interesting is that, of course, Maya and um, and Aoki teamed up to try to contempt with her because they probably don't want nothing to do with her. But the obvious thing is who's going to walk out as the winner. Well, normally I would have thought maybe Maya because... She's well known in the in the Yoshi world, you know, for being one of the best wrestlers. But <coughs> it was Ayoki who picked up the win when she pinned her, and that was pretty much it from there. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Now our next match, six woman tag match. We have team number one. We have all the way from Evolution Chi Chi. Then we got the veteran Tomoko Wananabe, and then of course, um, the current Oz Academy Open Weight Champion and former AAW. Uh, champion M Mio Momono, they take on Sadie Gibbs, Chikayo, um, Nagashima, and then of course the ace of Marvelous, uh, <coughs> Takumi Iroha. I thought it was a pretty intensified match. You would think that someone has to come out as the winner. I mean, look, you got some interesting wrestlers here. I mean, look, Chichi, I have to say, she is growing. I mean, she still has. <coughs> Uh, one year of, of somewhat of an experience in the wrestling business, but you got Tomoko Watanabe has more experience. You have, of course, Mio Momono. She is one of the most interesting wrestlers we have watched versus a team like Sadie Gibbs. We all know her reputation. Chikayo Nagashima, veteran. Of course, Takumi, the ace. How would this is going to resolve? I wasn't too sure. I mean, we saw pinfalls. We saw submissions. We saw things. People try to break out from submissions and pinfalls. I thought this was of a really fun match, but in the end, it ended in a 30-minute time limit draw, which, of course, here in the U.S., we, we think that's the most BS thing for anybody to do, but nonetheless, that's how it ends. So I'm not sure if we will ever see all these ladies in the same ring again, but if it does, then they might have to do this one just right. So we'll just see what happens until then. But for right now, I think we are done with Marvelous, I believe it's time to go with Oz Academy. Okay, Oz Academy with Sweet uh, Tears, I believe, yeah, Sweet Tears. This took pre uh, recently on the 10th of March in um, Shinjuku Face. 
Now let's start with our very first match. We have Chi Chi all the way from Evolutions <coughs> taking on Hakino. Now we often talk about how Chi Chi has improved after one year. Many people call her a prospect. You know, she's one of those wrestlers we definitely want to get behind. And don't forget, we do know that real soon she'll be facing against her own teammate, you know, Zones at an at the anniversary show. But that's another conversation for another time. But right now she faces Akino, who we have seen countless times in, of course, in Oz Academy. I have to say she did pretty well, but unfortunately, uh, Akino applied her a submission move and forced her to tap. Now, I don't know what Akino said to her in the post-match promo, but I'm sure it's very encouraging. But we know, we often say this, Chi Chi will excel more. So we'll see what happens until then. Now, our next match, we have a very fun tag team match. We have you <coughs> and Kaori Yonoyama taking on Ryo Mizunami and um, Sonoko Kato. Uh, of course, Ryo and um, Sonoko have been very strong and stable tag team, as we can remember. I mean, they really are f a fun tag team to watch. But however, when it comes to you, you and Kaori Yonoyama, know, they are two different spectrums. I mean... You, she is a very strong and powerful wrestler. I mean, not to mention the last ride that can she apply to you. And of course, you cannot count out the speed of Yonayama. You would think that those two elements, you know, opposites of each other would have been the deciding factor of this match. No. We have seen, of course, Mizunami and Kato. They are very strong, you know, very cohesive. But unfortunately, it was, of course, Mizunami with the guillotine leg drop that allowed her to pick up the win against you and of course a, t a w for her and of course her teammate next up we have another singles match we have kohaku from pro wrestling waves she faces against subasa kuragaki uh, i have to say this was a very good match i mean kohaku is like another version of saya ida if you guys ever seen her. i mean she's short but she's very strong and kohaku has been very, very impressive since watching her uh, make her debut. But how will she uh, do with K uh, Kuragaki? I have to say, Kuragaki has a much better experience, but it only took at least, what, a falcon arrow to put her away. And just like that, it was over. <sighs> now, our next match, we have Unagi Sayaka making her debut. She teams up with <coughs> Momoko Hanazono, Izuki Aoki, and they take on against Ozaki Goon. Um, who are, oh yeah, Kahe, um, Kakeru, um, Sayuri Noe, and Mayuhiki. But, however, uh, Ozaki Goon's personal ref was involved, Mio, uh, the sister of Io Sky. So, yeah, so she's involved in this match. Now, the interesting part of this match is, of course, is when Saito Inui and Unagi faced off. Now, don't forget, outside of of Oz Academy, they have teamed up before. They have faced off each other. Um, Unagi basically call, called her a potato on, on the X account, telling her about that. It's because I don't think she's ever seen this side of, of Saito Inui at all. I think it's very unusual. Now, we know that Saito Inui can play both sides, both heel and face. Even though when she's a face, uh, she has, like, this other, like, ca calm, cool demeanor where she's, like, not engaging too much. But, nonetheless, you would think this match was going to be interesting. Now, we know that Unagi was not the first time she's ever come across Mayuhiki. If you guys don't remember, last year, Mayuhiki had it, uh, was teaming up with my, uh, Mayumi and Suwama during that uh, six-person tag match. Uh but this time, it's a little different. You would think it was going to be a little different. However, of course, Unagi did a pretty good. However, she, uh, she had to rely on her teammates that much. Uh, Momoka, who we all know, she's a very unorthodox wrestler. Izuki Aoki, we know she has teamed and faced off with her before. But this is a different scenario. But the one thing that was funny is um, Mayuhiki likes to bring out a whip. And apparently, uh, Unagi used it against all members including the referee who as you know has been going slow whenever unagi takes but unfortunately this match ended in a submission thanks to mayuhiki and of course um apparently 
because of this match, automatically Unagi lost the, the DDT Iron Man Heavy Metal Wings title. But yeah, I'll get to that at the Unagi Sayaka Watch. Uh, I'll get to that as soon as possible. But however, something very intriguing happened after this. It appears that Unagi wants to join Ozaki Goon. I think I know what some of you are thinking right now. You'll be like, what? Yes. And she said, and this was translated on the X account, she's a fan. But <laughs> this, this will make you laugh. Can you guess who was shocked about to hear this? No, it wasn't Aoki or Momoka. It was Sayori or Noi. She was confused. Like, what? Like, she has no idea what just happened. Like, it's like, you got to be kidding me. So she was confused. I'm like thinking, is Unagi being for real or is she playing them? I don't know. That's <coughs> very weird. But I can't wait to see what Mayumi would think. But, but however, Mayumi has other things to contempt later on that day. Um, she teams up with Jaguar Yokota to take on Hid um, Hiroyo Matsumoto. And Akino, yes, Akino once again gets involved in another match, this time in a tag team match. Uh, but of course, uh, there will be some interference from, of course, from Ozaki Goon. Well, Nagi was not present, but just <coughs> that. But it was, of course, Akino once again upstaging Mayumi Ozaki by applying her Karana. So basically, things have gone a little very difficultly because, as you know, Mayumi Ozaki has been dealing with a lot of things. However, um, Mizunami and Kato showed up. I don't know what was the deal. And, of course, Miyu Momono, who, as you know, is the current Oz Academy Openweight Champion, showed up. You know she just came there to rub it on Mayumi Ozaki's face because it's like this. Mayumi has the AAW Championship and Mio Momono has the Oz Academy Openweight title. So, you probably can guess that's the reason. I wouldn't be surprised if it's a match between winner gets all. And I hope Mio Momono gets that because she wins the, the match if that's the case. But we'll see what happens. But for right now, I think we're done with Oz Academy. It's time for TNA. TNA. It opened up with the rematch for the X Division title. As you remember, in Sacrifice, or was it Hard to Kill? One of the two. Chris Sabin lost the X Division title to Mustafa Ali, who Mustafa Ali claims that, that Chris Sabin has lost favoritism, that the X Division needs leadership. However, you probably would think we're going to see the same old thing. However, we did not see, of course, those morons of the good hands again because last time they got involved in that match back in Sacrifice, but this time it did not. Um, but one thing that was interesting, Mustafa Ali used the title uh, in his favor by bringing it into the ring and then Saban, of course, getting second thoughts about using it on Mustafa. It didn't do any good for him because he got rolled up, but the ref did not see that Mustafa Ali, of course, Use the ropes against them and just like that, pick up the win. But we'll see how long Mustafa Ali will try to hold on to this belt because we know someone. We have no, we know there's plenty of others who would definitely try to dethrone him. But we'll see. Now, um, our next interview with Gia, she meets up with Speedball Mountain and of course the one most wanted man. Nick Menneth. Uh, I have to say, these guys are amazing. You know, like they're getting along great, you know, and of course, it's like they are clicking well. But right now, their mind is currently at the uh, Macklin and the Rascals, but they do have few goals in mind. Speedball Mount, they will love nothing more to the win the tag team titles. And we all know Nick Menneth's goal is the TNA world title. So we'll see that at some point. But right now, their match with uh, Macklin and with Macklin and the Rascals, I think that's the main event. Yes, it is the main event. So we'll proceed on. 
Now, we all saw what happened in Sacrifice with Josh Alexander. <coughs> he was low blowed by uh, Alex Hammerstone. Of course, um, uh, Josh did a little pr did a promo talking about how his now goal is to get back into winning the TNA World Title, and of course the obstacles that stood in his way. And one obstacle he ha he now knows he has a contempt is Hammerstone. He talked about how you know they had a great match they had in Hard to Kill, and then of course he obliged to give him his. Um, the rematch that he wanted, and then, of course, the low blow. But all of a sudden, I don't know why they're involved in this match. Freaking Bravo and Prudis showed up. They're saying that, you know, oh, that Dirty Dango softened him up for Hammerstone. That's a load of crap, you know, because Dirty Dango's trying to get the attention out of the expense of, of course, of Hammerstone. But Dirty Dango attacked him from behind. And then Prudence was trying to get involved. But however, the director of authority, thank God he took the law into his own hands and made a match between Alexander and Oleg Brutus. And that match that took place. But one thing that was interesting about this match is that Josh was smart enough to take down Bullock by dismantling his leg. He caught his leg in the rope and then he pushed it down. But it gave him enough uh, opportunity to use it against him by applying, of course, the ankle lock enough to hurt him. So, we'll see. <laughs> Excuse me, my throat is a little, you know, dry. So, anyway, as you know, Crazy Steve retained the digital media title. He talked about this and that. But, however, never say that no one alive could ever beat him. Actually, uh, you know the old saying, never say that, the only person who may not be alive, PCO showed up, so. I don't know if it was foolish or dumb, but it happened like that. Now, Ace Austin faces against Frank Gazir. Now, last week, as you know, um, the ABC are contempt with the fact that they were grieving with the loss of the tag titles. But however, <coughs> Frankie Kazarian went out of his head, went out of his way to rub it in on their faces and all this. So Austin decided to deal with him. However, there was one thing that was interesting about this match. We would think that Frank Kazarian would try to do dirty tricks on him, but no. It did not. Uh, somehow he was over to overcome it when he when the, we seen um Ace Austin applied like a bridge onto him, and that helped him win his matches. But so, but however, Kazarian was able to overturn that and turn it into, of course, a um, a, the chicken wing, and that was it. In the post match, of course, Kazarian attacked Chris Bay, who was by Ace's corner. But luckily, Eric Young showed up for the helping hand. So basically, they had they have an ally outside to help. Now, of course, we did see um, GML uh, had a little interview with Time Machine talking about, of course, how things did not go well at, um, of course, at Sacrifice. And then GYV, once again, they are saying they are the top uh, tag team. And then, of course, something was interesting. Shelly never acknowledged that the Motor City Machine Guns were the top tag team. He's saying it was Time Splitters. I'm like, why would he go there? We all know uh, more Steam Machine Guns, but I don't know what Kushida or Saban are thinking, but I'm sure that <coughs> they're kind of worried with Shelly how he's been feeling, but yeah. Now, our next match, we saw AJ Francis versus Joe Hendry. We know they've been going back and forth with each other, but however, uh, throughout the match, the Fran um AJ used um, the ref as a shield to protect himself and then brought a chair. But all of a sudden, Rich Swan showed up. We thought that he was going to help uh, Joe Hendry, but nope. He just turned against him by whacking him and then, of course, pinning him. Then, of course, Fran AJ Francis pinning him. So we don't know what's going to happen afterwards, but it's going to be interesting. Now, during the sound check, uh, I don't know what. 
Alan Angels was thinking. He brought Ash by Elegance. Uh, she made another announcement that she's going to have a third match. I think he's been a bit confused. He thought that there was more to what they wanted to talk about, but nope. He was really that dumb to, to bring that up. Now, our next match, we have Spitfire. Danny Luna and Jody Threat are current TNA Knockouts Tag Team Champions. Uh, they face against B uh, Bea Moss and Vanna Black. Now, however, prior before the match ever started, we did see, of course, the former uh, Tag Champions, MK Ultra and Decay, made their presence known. So, basically, they are keeping a huge watch on this match. So basically, they are determined to have uh, possibly a rematch for the tag title. So that is something we could see. Uh, but I can tell you that this match ended with Jody Threat pinning um, uh, Vayner Black, and that was it. But however, how is the situation with both former tag champions going to be dealt with? I'm sure that there's going to be something to make this right, so we'll see. Now, before our main event begins, Tasha Steeles makes her way to the ring, calling out Jordan Grace and demanding for another shot of the TNA uh, Knockouts World title next week. Uh, we'll see what happens till then. But right now, let's move on with our main event that features the Rascals and Macklin taking on Speedball Mountain and the most wanted Nick Menace. Now, we have seen Nick Menace since he first arrived. Steve Macklin feels that he stepped on his turf. But, however, you would think that there was a certain difference now that they did when, of course, everybody was diff uh, were in singles match. But there was a moment where Macklin accidentally went to Tope Suicida, misfired onto, um, onto Miguel. Uh, Wentz was not happy. Then Macklin told the Rascals to, to leave, but leaving him by himself. Uh, but... Macklin apparently ended up in the danger zone by Menace, and right there they picked up the win. Now, you would think this would have been a cause of celebration, but however, the system made their way and attacked uh, Menace and Speedball Mount to send a clear message that the system will always work in their favor. So, we'll see what happens until then, but right now, this is what we have for you guys in TNA. I believe it's time for Ring of Honor. Okay, Ring of Honor, ROH. As you know, we continue with more of the ROH Women's World Television Title Tournament. I believe we're in the quarterfinals of this tournament. So, um, let's see how this one rolls up. Um, we have Diamante versus Billy Starks. Now, many fans have often said <coughs> that Billy Starks could be the potential winner of this tournament. Well... I have to say we could potentially agree on that. But she has to go against a tough person like Diamante. You probably know that she would do exactly try to dismantle uh, Billy Starks. But unfortunately, it was her who got dismantled by Billy Starks when she applied a health, ne a health Nelson um, crossface. And just like that, she's in the semifinals. And I forgot who she's going to be facing. But yes. Now, our next match, this one's a very interesting. We have Aaron Solo versus Lee Johnson. Now, these two guys are no... <coughs> <coughs> there are no strangers with each other. They used to be part of the factory. I think that's what it was called. Um, but now that they're opposite ends, I mean, we have seen Lee Johnson has grow consistently. He is, he had, he's undefeated. Straight up, and there are those that believe that he's possibly on track to hopefully get a title opportunity. I think the ROH World Television title could be at the, the top of the discussion, but <coughs> nonetheless, we were going to see that. Uh, but it took only that one shot for Lee Johnson to pick up uh, solo, and just like that, it was over. So now he is seven and no, so so far, so good. Now, our next match is a four-corner survival match. We have uh, Robin Renegade versus Lady Frost versus Kiara Hogan versus Layla Hirsch. Now, um, this is, of course, they were in Atlanta, I believe. 
this is the hometown of Kira Hogan. Uh, of course, there was some thoughts that what if she wins it because this is the hometown girl. We've seen that on certain occasions where, of course, the hometown hero gets the hero's welcome and sort of things like that. And, you know, that that's one of the things that kind of puts it out. Um, but who was going to walk out? I mean, I think many of us would have thought, okay, Layla Hirsch, who, as you know, we all thought she could have won the opportunity for the ROH um, women's world title, but no, but we're hoping she does bounce back, um, you know, for that. So we'll see what that happens. But in the end, it was, of course, a bridge suplex by Kara Hogan to Robin Renegade allowed her to win. So basically, Lady Frost and Layla Hirsch did not win or lose. So they're technically safe. Now, during a post mat, uh, during a backstage segment, we have, of course, Griff Garrison and Cole Carter, uh, along with Maria. As you know, they'll be facing in the main event, the OCs, and, of course, um, no, not the OC, uh, Orange Cassidy and Trent Breda. Now, there's no secret in my mind that this was barking orders from Maria's husband, Mike Bennett. So we'll see what happens until then. Now, we do have our other quarterfinals match of the women's world television title. Uh, we have, oh no, my bad, I went ahead. My notes are real messed up. We have a proven ground match, I forgot. We have Athena versus Aisha. Uh, you may have know her as the Wode, um, weapon of ass destruction, which is the acronym. So I have, I didn't recognize her because it's been a long while since seen her. But of course, this match ended with Athena. However, Athena goes on a rampage again, as always. However, she has grown frustration, so she has been asking for someone to take her up to her limits. It's like she's asking if someone can try to take her out. Well, like the old saying goes, ask and then it shall be delivered. The person who responded is none other than our very favorite women's champion we've seen in AEW three times, actually, Hikaru Shida. Yes, you probably would say holy shit for seeing that happening. It just did. Uh, but later it was confirmed that this match will happen at the Super Card of Honor. So there is a the strong possibility that Kaikara Shida could win the ROH Women's title. So that's going to be a very interesting match to watch. But we just got to wait and see. Now our next match, we have Action Andretti and Top Flight. They take on the Iron Savages, and Jack Jameson. However, before the match could ever start, Action and Dreddy decided to challenge uh, Bronson with what he calls a chug-off. So, of course, he has to saw... Uh, Bronson has to sauce. He has a water bottle, so we saw... So when, uh, of course, Bronson uh, Bronson was actually dr chugging the sauce, he, uh, Action and Dreddy's like, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay. And just like that, it was over. But uh, I thought the match was pretty fun. I mean, legally, I thought this was a very fun segment in the beginning. But nonetheless, it was a lot of fun to watch. But, of course, it was Action and Jetty who pinned Jack, and it was just over just like that. Now, as you know, we did see a little interview with Lexi with um, Lee Johnson. Talked about how he's the one who's going to take over ROH. I mean... That could possibly happen. I could see him. Mean, he's grown so much. He's getting there. So we'll see where that leads us from here on out. Now, our next match, we have J Jacoby Wyatt and Nick Camarado, which was a very odd uh, pairing duo. Uh, they face against the Work Horsemen. Now, majority of the time, you don't see Jacoby Watts. I don't know what the hell he was doing. But uh, Camarado got his ass handed to him by uh, the Work Horsemen. When, of course, Anthony Henry stomped, double stomped them, and then Drake picked up the win. Yeah. <coughs> uh, we have Lance Archer versus a guy named Darren Benston. I think that's his name. I don't need to tell you. He was put in through a black blackout, and just like everything else, everybody dies. Just like that. Now, uh, Lexi actually did an interview with Tail Valkyrie, talked about everything. But, of course, uh, Dalton Castle is demanding that know where are the boys. 
If you guys remember not too long ago, the boys were put on a very display. And Tail Valkyrie uh, goes out claiming that Dalton Castle didn't do anything for them and all this and that. So, we'll see. Now, our next match in the Women's World Television title qualifying uh, quarterfinal, we have Mercedes Martinez versus Avedon. I think many people might have thought that Avedon would have been the obvious choice. But no, uh, the match took a turn when a mysterious figure attacked Abaddon while the ref did not notice on the back of her head. And then, of course, uh, there was the Fisherman Buster. Mercedes Martinez won. And later, it was revealed that the mysterious figure is none other than Diamante. And I would not be surprised if Abaddon gets her revenge on Martinez and Diamante at some point. Now, our next match is another four-corner survival match. We have Slim J versus Jack Cartwheel versus A.R. Fox versus Commander. Now, I have to say, the best moment of this match is Jack Cartwheel and Commander. They were, like, doing a cartwheel, like, one was trying to do, like, a destroyer car uh, cartwheel thingy. I don't know. It was fantastic. You don't see that every day. I mean, you probably will say that's impossible, but it did. It was a lot of fun. Uh, but however, it was Commander once again with his springboard shooting star press, allowing himself to pick up the win. Now, before our main event begins, Eddie Kingston, as you know, uh, it seems like now he's going to do something real cool. He posted out a video promo saying that, you know, about Mark Briscoe, you know, he said that, you know, Briscoe was... 17 years old, he wasn't even allowed to be on Ring of Honor, but guess who was? His late brother, Jay. So, as you know, he told him he should be going for the ROH title. I mean, he's like, he's trying to encourage him. Look, people will always associate you with your brother. You always be in your shadow. But ask yourself this question. You think that's what your brother wants? So, he's giving him the opportunity, you know, for a shot of the title at Supercard of Honor. And I think that's going to be official. I think it's official. But yeah, so I have to say, th this is not about, you know, respect. He wants to do this. Like, not just a fight. Let's make it happen, just like that. Now, our main event, we have Griff Garrison and Cole Carter taking on Trent Beretta and Orange Cassidy. Now, there is some long-hated history. There, like, <coughs> Ian Ruckabani no doubt believes that this was barking orders from uh, Maria Canelli's husband, Mike Bennett, as you know, they want they. I don't know if they think that they need to eliminate Orange Cassidy, but it did not work because, of course, uh, Maria tried to get a hug from Trent, but she but he gave a hug to Chuck. But it was the orange punch on Carter that took him out, and just like that, um, it was uh, Trent and Orange that picked up the win. So I thought it was a lot of fun. So, I um, think that's pretty much it with Ring of Honor. So, I think it's time for some news updates. Okay, so welcome to our news updates. So, let's get the show on the road. Let's begin with the updates with the promotions on their upcoming events. Now, as you know, later on this month, on the 24th of March, Kitsune Women's Wrestling will have the Kanpai show taking place in LA. So if any of my subscribers are from that general area, uh, hopefully you guys got your tickets. If not, then I don't know how we'll be able to watch it, but uh, we'll see what happens. But however, uh, they did announce that uh, Brooke Havoc will be making her appearance there. I'm pretty sure they're still trying to add more wrestlers since you know that uh, there was certain, uh, how do I say, drawbacks with certain wrestlers with their visas. They were unable to make it, but I'm sure the promoter is thinking fast what to do. Now, by the end of this month, on the 29th, uh, MLW War Games will happen. They just added this. Alex Kane will take on AJ Francis, so that's going to be a very interesting match. Now, uh... On March 31st, we have Ref Pro's Revolution Rumble. <laughs> they just announced Zack Sabre Jr. will be participating. So, that's cool to hear. And then, finally, we have for the Deadlock Pro Wrestling DPW, no pressure on on April 14th. 
there is a four-way match. Bojack versus Myron Reed versus Ichiban versus Diego Hill. So that's pretty much all of our uh, stuff with the promotions on their updates for their upcoming events. Uh, we have updates for WrestleCon. So I don't know if any of my subscribers, any of you guys are going to Philadelphia for WrestleMania week or attending some of the other events like WrestleCon. Uh, they just announced Mandy Sex, formerly known as Mandy Rose, will be there. And it turns out she is not the only one going there. Um, Rio One, or as you know him, Enzo Amor will also be there. So, yeah. Now, this is a very interesting thing that came around with The Undertaker. Now, for a long time, we have been asking why did the match between Undertaker and Sting never happen? We waited this long. We were... Hoping we could ever see that. I mean, that would have been a great match. But, however, uh, Undertaker had <coughs> this to say. He said that he might have considered a comeback only if Sting had never retired. Well, that, I mean, he would have, he should have known that this was going to happen sooner or later. I mean, look, guys, let's talk about Sting a little bit. We all know he didn't get the proper goodbye to his fans for a long time. He never got to say goodbye to his fans when WCW was bought. He never got to say goodbye in TNA. WWE could have given him the proper retirement, but they never did. But AEW did provide that. So that was one of the things that kind of, not haunt instinct, but he felt that he was never given that chance. So basically it was like, okay, it's time for him to go. It's time for him to retire, to step up, and let the next generation continue doing their thing. But it is. But, I mean, Undertaker could have had the opportunity if he had to, but it never did. So, I guess we will never know what that match would have been like. And I think many of you would have agreed. I mean, from both sides, from both AW and WWE, that would have been a great thing to watch. But, sadly, it didn't. So, yes, I think that's pretty much it for now. So, I think it's time to call it a day okay so let's talk about of course our upcoming um, event uh episode hope you guys enjoyed this one we do have more with new japan pro wrestling with the with the uh with the new japan cup i think we're in the uh i don't know what finals types but yes um i'm looking forward to it you know uh, but we are going to uh, review uh, Rampage and NXT Level Up. Those two are a priority. In case Those three, actually three, are a priority. I haven't considered if I'm going to do another one. I was considering maybe watching uh, Gambara Yoshi. It's been a while since I've seen it, but we'll see what happens. But for now, I think this is the plan, and we'll see what goes on from here and out. So I think that's pretty much it. So I will see you guys on the next DWZ time. Same VWV channel. I must bid all of you adieu. So, goodbye. Mwah. And have a nice day. Bang.